So we recently got more news about the Harry Potter TV show from HBO Max, so I thought I would give my immediate thoughts on them. So the first update we got was confirmation that Peeves was going to be in the show, and I can't say I'm terribly surprised. Like, if you ask people what the big things the film missed out from the book were, one of the main ones they will say is Peeves, floating around, causing havoc. Now, my personal opinion, I don't seem to think Peeves is as important of a character as a lot of other people seem to think. Like, I don't think he adds too much to the story when he appears in scenes in the books, and Given that he plays pranks and causes havoc, and so do the Weasley twins, the Weasley twins also get character growth and emotional beats that Peeves doesn't really get. Peeves just feels like a much worse, watered down, less whole version of the Weasley twins. However, the TV show was sold to fans as telling a more true version of the story from the books, right? So they had to include Peeves. They couldn't go ahead and make the same omission that the film was made. Plus, Peeves was mostly cut from the films for budgeting reasons, I think, and I can't see this show having too many budget issues. So I'm sure fans will be pleased that we're getting Peeves, and I think the budget issues that meant we didn't get Peeves in the film, similar to the budget issues that meant we didn't get Winky and Dobby more in the Goblet of Fire and the house elves and the other ghosts having a more prominent part in all of the stories. So if this is anything to go by, we should be getting that much truer version of the book story that they promised us. Personally, when it comes to Peeves, I'm not terribly bothered either way. What I will say is it is a good way to differentiate the show from the film. So this felt like a no-brainer from the showrunners. I am interested to see who they cast. And speaking of casting, apparently 30,000 people auditioned for the three lead roles, but nobody has been cast yet. And I don't think that's a surprise. I think they need to take their time with the casting. And I also think even if they had cast the three lead roles, I don't think they'd announce it publicly just yet because I'm worried about the casting and not for the reasons you might think. Sure, Dan, Rupert, Emma from the films are like, it feels like the perfect casting, right? They are the Ron, Harry and Hermione that many of us grew up with. They're who we picture when we think of these characters. But that's not my issue, right? Because a new generation of people will just picture whoever the new actors are as their trio, right? And that's fine. My issue, my worry with this casting is that they are going to be hiring very young, impressionable, new to their career actors who aren't PR trained, haven't had to deal with many crises, I imagine. And these children are gonna be subjected to so much. Regardless of the fact that this show hasn't even come out yet and it's already probably gonna be one of the biggest TV shows ever made, certainly of 2026. Regardless of the pressure and the spotlight that comes with that, the Harry Potter franchise is full of controversy. The author and her transphobic comments, the problems with racial representation from Cho Chang and Seamus Finnegan being very insensitive stereotypes to the anti-Semitism in the way that goblins are presented. Anytime anything new about Harry Potter comes around, whether it was the release of the Almanac book to the Hogwarts Legacy game, these talking points come up, as they should. I think we should critically assess the media we consume, right? But at what age do you think people are gonna start asking these three children to make a comment? to take a stand, right? At what age will the press ask them if they side with JK Rowling on her views? These kids are gonna be cast at 11, 12, 13 years old, right? And even if they're not asked, in an age of social media, even if they don't make comments themselves, or if they do and it's deemed the wrong comment, these children will be piled on by internet trolls, people from the far left and the far right, the media. I'm just, I'm so worried for these kids. And by God, I hope HBO have got amazing safeguarding precautions in place. And speaking of casting, it has been confirmed when it comes to age, the castings will be canon, right? And if you watched my video about the five things I think this TV show needs to get right, age-appropriate casting was one of them. The stories of characters like Snape and Lupin and Sirius, Harry's parents, they are all rooted in their age, okay? In the fact that Potters died so young. The fact that Wormtail was just a scared little kid, barely out of school when he betrayed his friends. The fact that Sirius finished school, fought in the war, went to Azkaban and then died when he got out. Never really had a life as a grown-up. Now their stories are still handled well in the film, even with them being aged up, but aging them up loses some of that nuance. And there are parallels, right, between Harry and James, Sirius and Ron, Hermione and Lupin, Snape and Draco, Neville and Peter. And those parallels are so much more integral to the story when you realize that these adults went through very similar things to our main characters at a very similar age, right? They went through school, they graduated Hogwarts and went straight into a wizarding war. So having these characters being the correct age, having them cast appropriately for that age, I'm very pleased about it. So they said we're gonna get both iconic locations and new ones, but 
what does that really mean? Well, the part about the new ones is obvious, right? We'll see places that we didn't get in the films. They specified the Hogwarts staff room, which is great. That's where Professor Binns died. Harry visits the staff room a couple of times. And that's cool. It means they are truly expanding the story from what we got in the movies. But they mentioned how we'll get iconic locations. And in my opinion, that means one of two things. Either they're gonna be reusing set pieces from the films, making Hogwarts Castle and the common rooms and the Great Hall all look the same, or they're saying we will have those locations, but they'll look different. The latter of those two options kind of feels like a weird thing to say. Like, the story takes place at Hogwarts Castle. We know we are gonna get the castle and the common rooms and the Great Hall. That's where the story happens. So if they're just saying, you'll get it, but it'll look different, sort of doesn't need saying, right? Of, of course we're going to get it, and we expect it to look different because this is a different telling of the stories. So the fact they've commented on it, said we will get iconic locations, I think means the big locations are going to look largely the same as they did in the films. And I always wondered, right, with like Universal Studios and the studio tours around the world, like, if they make money by showing fans these iconic settings, letting them walk around Hogsmeade and see the common room in the studio tour and Hagrid's hut. How could a TV show with its own version of what these things look like impact those places and how much money they make? Because they make a lot of money. Are they gonna start having two different Hogwarts castles at the studio tours or in Universal Studios theme parks? Are they gonna knock the old ones down and put a new, more relevant one there for the TV show. I mean, there's no way they'll do that because the current version means too much to people, makes them too much money, and people are already a bit iffy about the remake, so they're not gonna take that away from fans. So I think commercially, and now based on these comments, it makes sense that they will make many of the locations in the show look similar or the same to the ones in the films, because that means Universal Studios, the studio tour, they will still be relevant, they will still be appealing, they will still make money. But. As I said, a lot of people are already not on board with this remake, and I think this decision might make them struggle when trying to convert those people who don't think we need a reboot. Because if you're not going to make it look different because the sets are too iconic, I imagine you also won't change the music, because that's potentially even more iconic. So with the same sets, if it looks the same, and the same score so it sounds the same, how is this really going to feel? different to the films. So filming is set to begin in summer of 2025, which tells us two things, okay? First, it tells us we're probably gonna get summer 2026 as a release date, okay? There's a chance it'll be like Christmas time maybe, because I know the Harry Potter films can be associated with Christmas, and so the showrunners might want to capitalize on that, but I think they will be worried that if they do that, some of the conversation might be, well, look, I watch the Harry Potter films at Christmas, okay? You're not taking that tradition away from me. You're not replacing it for me with your soulless cash grab of a reboot. Or if the show is not well received to begin with, people might use the films and their Christmas traditions as ammunition to push back against it. We could also get maybe like an October release, like Halloween, for example, meaning the show will finish around Christmas time. But I think summer 2026 is probably a good estimate, right? A year after they start filming. The second thing this release date tells us is that we're gonna get a heck of a lot of news over the next few months. Casting, writing, directing, maybe even concept art. Budgets as well, so we can determine the scope of this thing. Is it gonna be bigger than the Lord of the Rings TV show from Amazon? There's a lot we're gonna get in the first half of 2025 as they move towards filming. And look, I'm going to be making videos about all of it, so if you haven't subscribed already, turn on that bell notification so you don't miss anything. You might want to, that's all I'm saying. And then over the summer, when they are filming, expect a lot of leaks, okay? Set pictures, actors in costume, we're going to get so much of that. And I don't know how I feel about that. I quite like going into these things blind sometimes, but I can't help myself. I want to know everything. Which brings me to the final update that we got. So I've been making a series of videos talking about how I would convert the books into a TV show a season per book. And one of the big things I've been adamant with is that these seasons will be a minimum of eight hours. I was confident that was the decision they'd make, but I think it is a problem being that long, particularly the earlier seasons, right? Because look how thin these books are. I don't know that they have enough substance to fill and make a well-paced eight-hour TV season. Now, a big pushback that I got was, if there's not enough substance, just make those seasons shorter, which is fair feedback, except I was sure they wouldn't do it. I was sure that eight hours was the minimum that they would go for, since their whole marketing campaign to sell this reboot to fans was that they wanted to make a TV show that gave them enough time to tell a more accurate version of the story from the books. And for me, more time had to be at least eight hours. And it's now been confirmed that the first season 
will run for eight hours. That might be eight single one hour episodes or 10 episodes of around 45, 48 minutes or so. And I really think the earlier seasons will struggle to pace their stories across eight hours, right? I hope I'm wrong and there are ways around it, but those ways all have drawbacks. Like they might tell certain stories and scenes away from Harry's perspective, which is a big move away from the books, which only has three or four scenes through the whole series, not from Harry's point of view. And doing that kind of contradicts the TV show statement that this show is supposed to tell a more book accurate version of the story, but it would allow them to tell other parts of the story, right? To introduce some dramatic irony so that viewers know certain things, that Harry doesn't know. Just a good way to build some tension. Other things they could do is just add new scenes that don't appear in the books, like show us what Ginny and Luna are doing away from our main characters. Obviously not in the first season because they're not a Hogwarts at that point, but in later seasons, they could show us what the twins are up to, Dumbledore, Hagrid. And there's plenty of scope to do that. We could also get like a whole Quirrell flashback episode about how he was possessed by Voldemort, but then that would kind of ruin the reveal that Quirrell was trying to steal the stone, not Snape like Harry, Ron and Hermione believe. And you couldn't just organically get to the point where it's revealed that it's Quirrell because that's right at the end. You couldn't finish an episode there, then have a flashback episode, then have a whole episode on his fight with Quirrell, because that's the end of the story. You could maybe have the penultimate episode end with the reveal that it's Quirrell, and then the final episode is half a flashback about what happened to Quirrell, leading him to that point, and the second half of it is the resolution of everything. I'm not sure how they'll do it, but if you want to watch a video where I talk about how I would make the first book into an eight-episode season of TV, you can watch this video next, where I do just that.